The story is narrated by an unnamed English granddaughter of Tessie and Douglas. It is about the elopement of Douglas' first wife, Olivia, with an Indian prince, Nawab. So the story starts with 2nd February. The narrator has put down her impression of all that she sees in her diary. The first entry is dated on 2nd February. Coming to Bombay from England by plane, the narrator is in SM. SM means the Society of Missionaries Hostel where there are 8 beds and the food is cooked by Miss Tati, a pious Swiss lady who has been looking after the kitchen for more than 10 years. She is good at making boiled stews and a roast and a custard. The woman on the neighboring beds warns the narrator not to eat anything outside the hostel. In an unclean stall outside, she shows that one window swarms of beggars sleeping without any bedding on the roadside. There is one crippled boy propelling himself on his regular rump. Through another window, the narrator sees equally ghastly sights. It is a hostel where European settlers live almost like beggars. One man, a German or a Scandinavian, is more than 30 years old. He is dirty and he is passively allowing a monkey to pick lice out of his matted hair. Now the story moves to 16th February. The narrator goes to Satipur where she lives in a bare, unfurnished room and led her by one Inderlal, a government officer, living in a pokey room behind a shop. Though unfurnished, the narrator likes the room because she can look out through the window at bustling bazaar outside. The narrator wants to see the rooms in Sadipur where Olivia lived once. Those rooms are now occupied by water board, the health department and the sub post office. Now the story starts from 20th February. The narrator calls on Indalal at his house, causing much of confusion to his wife and mother. With her limited Hindu vocabulary, she cannot communicate meaningfully with the woman. On the way back home, the narrator sees the suggestive dance of hijiras who are flat-chested like men and dressed like a woman. The flat-chested narrator wearing Indian clothes is regarded as a hijra and the boys laughed at her. Now the story goes to 24th February. With Inderlal, the narrator goes to the town of Katam, where the place of Nawab is situated. The bus journey is most uncomfortable for her as the bus is overcrowded and goes through hot and dusty areas. The Nawab is being dead. His palace is unoccupied. The narrator wants to visit the Nawab private mosque, but Inderlal is not interested in it. He takes her to a Hindu shrine where there are statues of Hanuman and other Hindu gods make her plaster of Paris. The narrator is not interested in them. She throws away the bits of sugar and rose petals given to her at the shrine. However, Indalal worships devotely. Now the story moves to 1923. Living alone in House of Sadipu, Olivia feels bored. Her husband Douglas, a government officer, is engrossed in his work. He spends very much little time with her. The couple attended the dinner party. It was given by Nawab at her palace in Katam. Olivia and the Nawab fall in love with each other at the very first sight. Four days later, the Nawab visits her with his, with his rentue. Olivia receives him with an immense delight. A few days later, the Nawab once again invites Olivia and Douglas to his palace. Olivia pleads with Douglas to accept the invitation, but Douglas declined with willfully. Now the story moves towards 28th February. One day the narrator sees a trio on the veranda of the traveler's restroom. An ascetic called Chidananda, his companions call him Chid, and his new girlfriend who gives a bitter account of the several ways in which Indians have cheated them. The watchman charges 3 rupees and lets them into the gloomy house. The house was originally the bungalow of the medical officer Sanders. At the back of the house is the ruined grave of their child. The chid has been converted by the Hindu Rishi who came to England to preach about the universal love surrounding like a ocean. Next, the story moves towards 1923. Olivia is in the habit of wandering through the graveyards. The latest graveyard she visits is that of Mrs. Sanders' son. Olivia becomes sad. She tells Douglas that she would like to have a child and at the same time 
does not want to have a child for the fear that it might die douglas consoles her by saying that children can be saved from the death the next day olivia calls on mrs sanders but the lighter grave is false as she is concerned more about maintaining the neatness of her room as is seen in her vehement scolding of the servant who comes into her room wearing the dirty shoes olivia next goes to katam with mrs crawford to call on the nawab's mother olivia is eagerly looking forward to join with nawab next olivia and mrs crawford drive to the house of mrs minnis now also olivia is preoccupied with the nawab's private life mrs crawford informs olivia that nawab is married but his wife zahira is not living with them with him the state of kabupur belongs to sandy's family now that sandy is not living with the nawab it because of uh, dowry is hotly debated now in katam mrs crawford mrs minnis and certain other ladies draw up a plan to go to simla olivia is asked by douglas to join the trip but she refuses to go unless douglas accompanies her the nawab invites to her picnic at the picnic olivia and the nawab play musical chess nawab wins the game the picnic gives an opportunity to the nawab and olivia to come close together now the story moves towards 8th march olivia does not tell douglas about her picnic with nawab as he is too much busy with his work so she writes to her sister marcia who is in france after her separation from her french husband the narrator learns from interlal that he is not quite happy with his uneducated wife ritu whom he had to marry out of his mother's compulsion now the story moves towards 10th march the summer begins everybody sleeping in the open room the narrator also sleep likewise one night ritu begins to wail loudly while sleeping inderlal's mother stops her mouth and sprinkles some rice on her head and prays after some time ritu sleeps very quietly the next morning she wakes up and without knowing what happened on the previous night and the story moves towards 20th march inderlal's mother in law introduces the narrator to a 50 year old widow whom all call maji respectfully she takes the narrator to the shrine of widows who in conformity with the sadi system burn themselves to the death the sadi is abolished now the story moves towards 1923 douglas is unhappy because he arrived late and he could not prevent a diseased grain merchant's wife from committing suicidal sati at a party olivia glorifies sati she says that there is nothing wrong in widows wishing to follow her dead husband into the next world her speech shows her attachment towards douglas now the story moves towards the present it is march 30 the narrator and the inderlal come across the starved chid who says that both his companions have abandoned him the narrator takes pity on him and takes him to her own room now the story moves towards april 10 chid with his shaven head and his nakedness attracts quite a crowd wherever he goes woman put bananas and guavas in his begging bowl which he eats after coming to his room it appears that narrator gives him sex as he gives him food now the story moves towards 15th april childless woman folk to baba frida shine to be blessed with children one day the narrator also goes there though she is aware that she must have a husband if she is to have a child next the story moves towards a past now it is 1923 the husband's wedding day is the occasion when the hindu ladies in very large numbers assemble at the muslim shrine of baba frudas to get cured of their childlessness religious clashes between hindus and muslims break out on this day major minnis advises the nawab to take adequate precautionary step to avert any disaster but he suspects that nawab is being a muslim would be favorable to muslim only the outbreak of a sandstorm is make a tension for both the hari takes shelter in olivia's bungalow and arrangements are made for him to go to bombay 
and be with his ailing mother a few days later nawab himself arrives and tells olivia and douglas that all tension has vanished and normalcy has been restored he also says that he has written to harry sick mother to come and rest in his palace he further adds that he cannot live without harry so harry goes away with nawab to the later palace to very much in olivia's envy now the story starts with 25th april dust storms start blowing but the child is unaffected sitting very quietly in the corner of the room and chanting mantras the narrator is very angry and throws away all his belongings outside but the child picks them up very cool and brings them back into his room and then resumes and then starts his chanting at this time ritu breaks into the room and starts shouting as she did on a night not long ago now the story moves towards 30th april now the ritu's condition is very worse she is look locked up inside the room always child says the ritu might be possessed with any evil spirit which could be driven out by applying a red hot iron on the various parts of her body such as her arms and soles of her feet the narrator does not approve of it she suggests to indala that scientific psychiatrist treatment could be given to ritu effectively and indala welcomes this idea now the story goes towards 2nd may maji suggest taking disturbed ritu to himalayas with herself and other devotees child is enthralled by the idea of taking a holy pilgrimage and agrees to join maji now the story moves towards 1923 olivia goes to the nawab palace after her husband douglas leaves home nawab takes her to an underground room where there are two pianos which he ordered for his wife sandy the pianos are uh, dust laden because nobody has used them for his sake Olivia plays a piano through not to her satisfaction. Douglas and Olivia are in the dressing room. Olivia tells her husband that she wants to beget sons like him. Douglas gives him a dinner party to Major Minnes and Mr. Crawford in his garden. At the garden, the three men obscurely refer to the Nawab Secret's act of decoy to raise her fund for himself. Olivia is shocked by this adverse report on her lover. Now the story moves towards 12th June. The narrator preserves child strangely worded letters. She recollects her meeting with the Nawab nephew and the heir Karim and his wife Kitty in London. Keith and Doreen designers were starting a partnership with Karim and Kitty for manufacturing boutique clothes made exclusive for Indian materials. Kitty proposed to draw a picture based on Ajanta paintings. Nawab's connection with ICS officer Douglas wife Olivia was also hinted by Karim. Now the story moves towards the past. It is 1923 in the Nawab Palace. Nawab tells Olivia that he is pained by her suspicion of his link with Decoats. One Sunday evening, Olivia goes for a walk with her husband Douglas in the graveyard. Questioned by Olivia, Douglas tells her that Nawab protects Decoats and gets paid by them for this service. Changing the topic, Olivia expresses her wish to have a children. She feels that if she and Douglas attend the husband's wedding day ceremony at Baba Frida's shrine, she will conceive. She breaks into tears because she is childless. Douglas becomes very stiff. Now the story moves towards 15th June. The narrator finds an old beggar woman in a rags lying uncared for near a mound of refuse. The woman's mouth is open and she seems to be murmuring something. A thin stream of excrement is trickling from her body. The narrator asks the medical superintendent, Dr. Gopal, to give a treatment to the beggar, but he is callous. He says that he does not have any necessary infrastructure to help such case of emergency. Finally, the narrator reports the matter to Maji, who rushes out and finding the beggar woman lying on the bank in the same helpless position, puts the dying woman's head tenderly on her lap. and stroke her hair the woman a window sorry a widow named by leelavadi dies at the nightfall the story now moves towards 1923 it's a past olivia feels that douglas lacks manliness as he cannot impregnate her she wants to consult dr sanders regarding her not conceiving 
she goes to nawa palace where he entertains her by arranging a dance of hijras or inunj now the story moves towards 20th june on a hot summer day inderlal and the narrator go to baba fridash grove it is cool inside the grove there is nobody else there inderlal and the narrator tie two pieces of a red string to the lattice in the shrine praying for the fulfillment for their wishes inderlal says that his wish is related to his work in office but the narrator does not reveal what her wish is the two are romantically drawn each other which is revealed in their touching of each other's hand now the story moves towards the past it is 1923 the nawab takes olivia olivia to baba fruta shrine they tie two pieces of red string at the shrine for the fulfillment of their wishes then the nawab takes her outside the shrine and sleeps with her under a tree now the story moves towards the present it is 31th july maji tells the narrator that she is pregnant and offers to abort her maji informs that she was a professional midwife in the recent past now the story is in present till now it is 15th august chid returns from his trip to the himalayas as usual he sleeps in the narrator room inderlal creeps into the narrator room after chid falls asleep the narrator does not inform inderlal about her pregnancy now the story moves into the past it is 1923 Olivia sympathizes with the Nawab because the latter is harassed by Major Minnis for his association with Decotts to argument for his income. Olivia informs the Nawab but not Douglas about her pregnancy. Now the story moves towards the present. It is 28th August. Douglas has a son by his second wife Tessy. After he becomes 12, the boy is sent to the school in England and never returns to India. Douglas retires and with his second wife he goes to england and settles down there and the douglas son is the narrator's father now the story is in present it is 27th august chit falls ill and it was treated by and he was treated by dr gopal at his hospital the unhygienic condition at the hospital is to seen is to be believed and said by the narrator nobody knows where olivia is the narrator decide to stay on india in order to trace her whereabouts now the story moves towards the past it is 1923 harry tells olivia that nawab has gone to indore to voice his protest against investigation into his financial misdeeds the nawab says that douglas will be ashamed when olivia gives birth to a child resembling him that is the nawab to prevent this olivia decide to abort herself now the story goes to the present it is 31th august the narrator pregnant goes to the head of maji offering to abort her maji makes the narrator lie down on the floor and does something to her it's like a massage getting up after some time the narrator changes her mind and does not want to abort she feels like a feeling of rapture caused by her pregnancy now the story goes to the past it is 1923 the midwives in katam supervised by nawab's mother begum about olivia by using a twig t w i g that night olivia starts bleeding profoundly she informs douglas about it he at once takes to dr sanders hospital sanders see through olivia's sinful contact with nawab olivia escapes from the hospital and goes to nawab's palace and meets harry there the nawab is not there the inquiry into the nawab financial lapses turns out to be against him he goes to england to appeal for the higher authorities before going away he arranges for olivia staying in a comfortable house in the town of ex up the mountains and the story ends with nawab die, dies in a plopsy in london and after a few years olivia dies in the town of ex thank you